Hello everybody, JT Bear here and welcome to one of those random outdoor moments. So pretty bored today, so I thought what I would do is I would uh, give a try to that whole, uh, well, Dakota fire hole theory. Got myself a nice piece of land here. Might as well dig a hole and start a fire, right? So, let's get started. So basically the premise is you start with a couple of holes, about a foot deep. YouTube consensus seems to be somewhere between a foot and uh, 16 inches. Probably going to go closer to, you know, just under 18 inches because that's the length from my elbow to the end of my fist. But you need two holes. One for your fire and one for your draft. Now, I thought it would be fun for the whole outdoors thing to try and pry this up with a knife. But who am I kidding? Right? What a pain in the butt this is. It does work though. So we'll get back once I've got this one dug out and get started on the explanations. Well, I didn't get very far in my hole when I started finding garbage. Well, that's happy joy. Something for the recycling, I guess. Well, digging with the knife wasn't a whole lot of fun, but I found this in the long shed. I think it's an ice auger, but it seems to be working all right here. And pull! Not too bad. Not sure I'd want to drill a well this way. But it'll work for the fire pit. Not a bad hole, really. And clean that up and make it a decent width and get on with the next one. In fact, I'm gonna have to build another hole before I can even try this. I've got a huge chunk of root sitting here and I don't wanna risk an underground fire. So, it's a good thing I'm planning on digging this all up anyway. We'll make a new first hole then. All right, so I'm much happier with this hole. I believe that is deep enough. About 18 inches, elbow to fist. So, now I'm gonna start building the air hole. Well, building, digging the air hole. I don't know how well this is showing up on the camera, but you can see I've got my hole started from the main pit. And I'm trying to match it up with my hole going from the air pit. Digging away, digging away. All right, so. I got my hole through there. I can honestly tell you there's quite a feeling of satisfaction when that finally happens. Now I've seen a few people here on YouTubes and on the interwebs in general that kind of suggest this is not necessarily a good idea for a survival situation, at least not for a short term survival situation. And uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of effort to dig one of these out. The real question though is, how well does it work? Might not necessarily be an idea for right away in a survival situation, but there will undoubtedly be times when you find you've got a little time on your hands. So, with that in mind, not a bad project for a survival situation, and it will keep your fire underground, in theory. Well, not completely underground, but less visible, you know? Let's test that part of it, shall we? So in an effort to find some nice dry wood, I've collected some dead wood from around the property. Some of it was sitting on the ground, some of it was yanked down from trees. But you can tell from that snap and clean break, well, easy break, that it's dead and not green. So, in theory, this should work. Now, I'm not a survivalist. I'm not a prepper. I'm just some guy who tests things he sees on the internet. So, don't give me flack for my fire starting skills. Alright? Alright. So I'm going to try and shave some of this off here with my hatchet just so I can get some nice thin dry stuff that should, in theory, light up pretty easy. Certainly shaving off this branch easy enough and picking up in the wind, so I'm gonna guess it's both dry and light. Deadwood, the only way to go. And a little farther up, rinse and repeat. 
All right, well, it's been a while since I built a fire in anything but that uh, fire pit we had out back in Penticton. So I'm feeling a little uh, out of practice. But I'm just gonna put some of these more easily burnable bits down in the bottom and uh, hope some basic fire starting skills come back to me from my boyhood days. So I'm gonna try two of the different things I used to do when I was camping as a kid. Um, and usually we'd just throw some Boy Scout juice on there, so these are not, you know, often tried. These are occasionally tried. I've got some of that split up wood, just wrapped it in a little bundle of paper here. I'm gonna drop that down in the bottom with a bit of it sticking up so I can easily light that. And if that doesn't work, the next thing I've done is I've taken some old jute cord here wrapped it around another very spongy piece of that soft dry wood and uh, we'll try lighting that. But first, the paper. And here's to hope. That's a little far up from my bundle but I'll try that again with uh, my main hand. We'll get the camera back in a second. Alright, well I've got that going a little bit now. My camera's not focusing very well. But hopefully it's going to pick up that tender in the middle of it. And we'll have a fire going here shortly. Not exactly smokeless, but hey, I'm burning paper in, you know, a wet hole. So, we shall see. Looks like my flame went out. Should have brought some Vaseline. Stuff burns forever. So at this point I've just shoved a crumpled piece of paper in my little traveling hole here to try and light it up that way and get some draw. You'll see the smoke definitely is coming from the one hole and not the other. So I guess that's sorta of working. Sorta. Of. Burn you burn! Well she's smoldering but she don't want to burn so I'm gonna say this calls for slightly more drastic measures. It's a good thing I'm just in the backyard. I'm going to get some Vaseline. See now that looks like it's going to work. Gotta love Vaseline for starting a fire. Well, I think what we're learning today is clearly I would never make it as a pyromaniac. All right. And I'll find a way to get this fire started yet. I just want to check and see if the pit idea works, okay? Having problems with the basic fire concept. Not good. Well, I've got a fire going in there for now, but it took a whole lot more paper than I would have liked to uh, have used in such a fashion. Definitely does draw from the one hole though, and vent out the other, so that aspect of it has definitely been proven by this. Bloody hard to light though, compared to just, you know, lighting a fire in a ring of rocks. But I guess if you're going for stealth and all that stuff, sure, why not? Could put a grill right across that easy enough. A lot of people say green wood. I'd say a grill, but you know, that's me. Citified, just playing in the dirt. All right, let's try and get some wood on that before it goes out. Not a bad little fire pit once you get it going. And I'm sure it would be nice and easy to cook on. Definitely easy to find a grill that'll fit across such a, a small hole as compared to trying to span an entire fire pit. Well, standard fire pit. But, uh, I don't know, bit of a pain to get it started. I'm noticing every time I put a piece of wood in there, I seem to be knocking down a bit of the edge as well. But, uh, I guess this will give me a good idea what the Manitoba mud looks like when it dries too, won't it? Nice little fire though. Now that it's going. So let's just enjoy the fire for a few minutes, shall we?
definitely burning nice and hot from just very little sticks. So I can see why people definitely, uh, or I can definitely see why people compare this to a rocket stove. I got a nice fire going here from just some very little sticks. So that's good. Waste not, want not, they say. Spend as little fuel as possible to get your objective achieved. So in a long-term survival scenario, yeah, build one of these, get good at it. I think if I was going to build one of these properly in long term, I might make this fire hole a little bit wider than I made this one with the uh, ice auger. They do recommend about a foot around. I think I've only got about eight inches around going on this. So that may be part of my problem, but who knows. I'm guessing somebody out there has built one of these before and can probably tell me straight off the hop what I've done wrong. But all in all now, it seems to be working. Huzzah! As it suddenly feels like Christmas and I'm filming for the Fireplace Channel. Not really, but it feels like it. Looks much nicer from slightly up and above. Alright, well my battery on this camera is pretty much dead from my attempt to make this thing work today. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up here for the Dakota Fire Pit video. Technically it does work. Eh, whether or not I would build one in, in an immediate survival situation, I don't know. Long term survival situation? Yeah, probably. Nothing else to do, right? It's not like you got to go to work. So uh, yeah, I'm going to let the battery finish itself off uh, watching the fire. Have a great day everybody. Well, if you've stuck around this long, it's only fair to let you know that in the uh, next few days and weeks, I uh, intend to be giving a test of that, what they call it, Canadian Candle Swedish Torch. But I'm going to be doing it um, following the method of bushcraft my way. So, stick around if you want to see how that works for me. Basic premise being, if I can do it, anybody can do it.
still going. And very little smoke. I like how the sap explosions are caught inside the hole so you don't have uh, sparks and embers flying everywhere. It's a nice convenient bonus. I haven't heard anybody mention these things. Spark containment. How am I going to put this out? Well, it's Manitoba with a block of ice, of course. Interesting little smoke effect going on underneath there as it all melts. I should cool it off, though. Alright, everybody, this is the really real end. Thanks for sticking around this long. If you did, go play outside. Play safe but go play outside.